Hey guys, what's going on? Massive Beats here checking in. Today we're gonna see how we can set up uh, a session specifically with the UC1 and UF8. You don't have to have both of them or even any of them, but it is a good example on how to get a session organized. Well, I start with a template that I call the SSL template. And so it's a good habit to start with a simple template so you don't box yourself in. And uh, in this case, we just happen to use the uh, UF8 and the UC1. So this is geared towards that, but similar principle could apply to any specifically uh, channel strips. Um, uh, the SSL channel strip 2 here works in conjunction with the UC1. And um, basically, the UC1 acts as a remote control. Um, we're going to import another one bites the dust. By the Warren Ewart produced like a pro band. And so before we do that, let's make sure each channel has an instance of SSL uh, channel strip 2 or your preferred channel strip plugin. The idea is to get things the same across the board, like on a big mixing board, and keep it very, very simple. Uh, all the pyrotechnics can come in later, right? So we just drag that over, make sure the session is organized. Of course, if it comes from Warren Yord, it is organized. And check that they all come from the same project here at the bottom. So that way, logic knows, yes, they're all from one project. And then it does its thing, and uh, then it renders the wave forms, wave forms quite rapidly. And on the left, um, well, as you can see, they're already in order. So it starts with the kick and then goes all the way to the vocals. So um, yes, always uh, make sure the session that you're starting with with. Uh, is organized from the beginning with, right? Sometimes you have to organize it. It doesn't always come nicely pre-worked on, like Warren did. Thank you, by the way. That is a tremendous work that the guys did. Um, cool. So uh, first thing I do, and I'm going to speed this up for you. I'm going to uh, rename this when things are, you know, when Pro Tools exports, it gives these long track names. Uh, the first tracks here for me are just audio one to four but that's because i think i at one point i changed uh, the channel strip setting and so it imprints that audio one to four on it everything else is like uh the the track basically the the clips name um and imprints that onto the track so uh we're not going to change the in logic terms region name here on the right but we will change for simplicity you know kick in, kick out, snare, top, bottom, and so forth, so that we can read that easily. And most importantly, so that uh, the small display on the UF8 doesn't come up with an even weirder abbreviation. Um, even when you go above five characters, it starts to truncate and make um, uh, abbreviations from it. And sometimes they don't make any sense. You might as well just put in three letters on your own. So, yep, here we have the drums. And let's move on to the bass. And so the first thing you see is turning on the system. I have a remote for that because they don't come with an on or off switch yet and no software feature to do so. And then once you press uh, 360 on either of them, it brings up basically all the plugins together, all the channel strip inserts, channel strip twos, they form a large mixer. And my monitor is a 43-inch monitor, so that's big enough. But, you know, um, as long as you um, have a somewhat of a okay visibility on your computer, on your monitor, you'll be just fine. And here, if I press on the new channel mixer setup, this translates directly uh, to my um faders and um, settings on the UC1. Um, so then they really work in conjunction. So these faders now are not controlling the uh, logic faders and channels. They are really staying inside um, the SSL workflow here. 
So that is a neat thing. You can do all of that with a mouse, by the way, but uh, I'm organizing it to be the same across the board. I'm making sure everything is labeled yet. Yes, I saw I have a typo there with snare, um, but making sure my session is okay. Um, and then I can decide, do I want to work in the 360 uh, plugin mixer or do I want to put that away and still, you know, let UF8 control um, logic uh, faders and UC1, basically the plugin, uh, EQ, compression, expander, um, and so forth. And then also let the UC1 control the bus compressors. That is entirely up to you. And we have been renaming the tracks, Just making sure that is all correct. And notice I am not playing any music at this point just yet because I want to keep my ears fresh. So, uh, you know, also it's a good way to learn, uh, to understand the session visually. You go like, oh, okay, here's my kick all the way down to the rooms. Here's my bass, here are my guitars. What type of guitars do I have? Um, it gives you an idea, you know, maybe who played the guitars and what, what they tried to do. Sometimes if it's a you know lead guitar, a rhythm guitar, label that uh, and so forth. And then we go on uh, labeling this and then we're going to go on to the background vocals, organize these, put them in the right order. Um, uh, Warren and Mark, Mark Martell, the amazing singer. So put all of this together so it makes sense. And then we're going to color them and then we're going to put them on buses. I have my buses as tracks and somehow... Logic decided to put the last tracks behind uh, my FX and subgroups. And so I was a little bit confused and I say, hey, there they are. Probably goes by the numbering, but it doesn't matter. We organized this, just making sure things make sense, put things where they belong, then move everything up there. There you go. And then... Um, so in Logic, the reason why I have these as tracks is so that it can move the buses and oxes around, which you normally cannot move around freely. It goes by the order uh, at which time they were created. And I'm creating some more tracks here. I got to make sure they also have the SSL plugin installed. And then we're going to also make sure that our effect sends are the same. And I have sort of like the Chris Lord algae, that CLA epic kind of concept that I have uh, the same sends set, set up on every track. Um, doesn't mean I have to use it, but it's there. It's routed. It's basically like pre-cabled. And then I can, when I look at my buses, I have a few, um, I, you know, I have a few different versions of, you know, different plugins, different reverbs, different delays. And we're going to choose one of them. So I don't have to like search uh, for everything. I have two or three preloaded favorites um, and uh, on each uh, aux. And then I select which one I want. And then you can always change that out. But it's, it's a starting point. Okay, so here the last one is the reference mix. I produced like a pro. So we're going to, we don't want to have this run through the plugin and we don't want to have any sends on there so we're just going to disable all of that i did that by accident and forgot hey this is a special track a reference always put that as my last track and then uh you should not forget to mute it all right let's finish this renaming look at these long long names but that is, again, it feels like it's a hassle, but I really recommend you doing this because, you know, you will be staring at a screen. It's sort of like if you'd stare at a console, you'd still need some tape maybe on the table to know what what is. So that hasn't changed. And then a big thing is coloring everything. Now, I understand this is logic and we're here, you know, most of you are probably here for logic also, but... Uh, this is very similar in, in all the DAWs color coding things. I have a, my own color coding system that is consistent. This is what my drums get. The bass is always like this sort of off bluish purple. What is it in English? Yeah. 
in between blue and purple. The singers always get this nice, loud, bright, energetic color. And backgrounds get a little more of a muted color. So that just helps me feel it. Um, and then usually brass gets yellow and guitars get green and keyboards get brownish, like, like a Hammond organ sort of. I think of the wood in there. Anyways, and then it's important to save it. Save the project. I actually have it done a little bit earlier, but that's okay. And make sure that all the dependent files also get saved with it. Meaning, you know, you're getting that imported from somewhere in your downloads folder. You can delete it there. The project has it all contained in the folder. And that is my setup that makes a larger session look really easy, right? We have drums, bass, guitar, people singing, and some effects, if you bring it down to that. And then all of these go to a different bus. And uh, so later on, we can just make adjustments with the buses if we need to. Um, we can do stem mastering from that point of view. And uh, we can do tons of things without having to go into each individual track. I'm not a person who does top-down mastering. Uh, but for certain things, it makes sense if you have, you know, the same person 25 times um, and, you know, everything's set up properly and you need to make some, some broad changes. It makes no sense going in there 25 times. You go on that bus. Um, with the guitars too, there are certain things that warrant like a global approach. Uh, if you want to dip some frequencies with a dynamic EQ um, or, you know, sidechain things that happens on the bus. But if there's like one part that sticks out that's, you know, brilliant or terrible or whatever, and you need to work on that, then the top-down approach makes no sense because you'd be affecting everything else. So, and here is my, uh, I've been talking so much about it, my buses. And uh, whatever is sort of like dimly blue, that is just because nothing's happening on it. It's not active. It's what logic does to save resources. But we have uh, three delays, slap, throw, and tape. And then we got uh, reverbs from short to long, basically. And you can blend them to taste. And here's the session when you hit X. Uh, I have another uh, window as well, um, where I have my buses permanently displayed on the left. And um, so I don't have to move them around. So I have a dual monitor set up, sometimes three monitors. And that's not to be fancy. That is just so I don't have to move things around. It's actually being lazy if you want, because I don't want to have to move things around. You don't have to be the best or the largest monitors. I even think two small monitors are better than one large one. And here we go. That's how we assign to the buses. When you highlight all of them, select drums, select electric. Now we're going to go to backgrounds. I'm going to make sure you don't include Mark here. I have to listen to this and I assume that would be Mark doing backgrounds as well if it's not well, that is the downfall of not listening to the section but that can easily be corrected and this is really done very very quickly that goes to my backgrounds and here we have then special effects now I don't have a um, preset bus for special effects because my effects are usually the special effects um, that's in this case it's printed so I just took take an empty bus like in this case the keyboard bus because it already has the similar color uh, and then I rename it um, so there is some flexibility doesn't have to be landlocked and these names these labels here you can change that in the in out settings so um, instead of giving you aux 33 or aux 1 it'll just give you drums you know so if they don't, then are not drums, then you have a problem <laughs> because that is fixed across all sessions. That is the downfall. It's not, it doesn't get stored with sessions, it gets stored in the logic uh, general preset. 
but I still prefer that over seeing Ox 33. What do I know what Ox 33 is? I want to see uh, in the logic mixer, I want to see exactly where this is going and we're going to route it that way and we're going to build the bus so that it matches. Now that is my setup. And so now we have each, um, yeah, each bus has a um, SSL bus compressor. Not that you need to use it on each bus, but it's there. There you see it on the right. And then each track has the SSL channel strip too. So SSL bus compressor two plugin and an SSL channel strip two plugin. That's all controllable via the UC one. And then everything logic, if you will, gets controlled by UF8. Although there is a crossover. Uh, that crossover is the layer called plugin mixer. So if you just want to work in this um, without touching logic, you can. Turning the plugin controller and then looking at the plugin, I just look at what's in front of me, in front of my hands. But this is definitely done very, very well here. I mean, these knobs are, you on my 43-inch monitor, it's, you can almost, you feel like you want to leap in. I mean, the next level would probably be a touch screen at some point for Mac OS where you can actually put your, your hands on it. You know, I don't know, a 70-inch touch screen, uh, 8K monitor where you kind of like twist your hands over it, a couple of fingers and hold on to these things and with a tactile resp response. Yeah, Apple hire me. I'm just giving you some ideas, right? tactile screens that reverberate back a uh, VR experience so we can actually emulate consoles um, but not just not just the sound and how they look like but actually also how we touch them and engage like we do now with VR games we are golfing and we're playing tennis apparently so why not bring that into music and that's it um, a lot of talking, as you can see, the session can probably be set up in 15, 20 minutes, clean session, ready to go. Um, you do that with every session, very simple. And then you can have fun with UC1, UF8. And if you run out of ideas and if you feel like certain sounds can't be solved, well, then you bring in the fab filters, the even tight split EQs, the waste, the clippers, the limiters no particular order but don't start with that don't slap that everywhere the, the only thing i have on the stereo uh is i have a j37 or one tape plug-in uh the ssl bus compressor and later on when i get into when i have my levels set up more i add a simple limiter that i'm not trying to hit but it's still there so we're kind of like working in the ballpark where we're going to be um not a mathematical precision thing but just 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 to get a feel already. And that is about it. That was a quick setup tour, how I organize my sessions. How do you organize your sessions? What do you do to get started? Um, I've seen tons and tons of different ways of doing this and saving time, saving nerves, saving mouse clicks, saving headaches uh, and making things enjoyable. Anyways, please like and subscribe. Massive Beats out.